Now, one of the world's most prestigious universities has suffered a massive funding blow because of its refusal to condemn calls for a genocide against Israel because it's been weak on anti-Semitism. This is an encouraging development, a case of strong values and clear logic fighting back against the dangerous, woke culture that's enveloping educational institutions around the world and which has reached a new low over the Israel-Hamas conflict. Let me take you through this as it unfolded. Like other universities, Harvard, the most prestigious university in the US, has been swamped by pro-Palestinian activism. There have even been ugly scenes of pro-Palestine or pro-Hamas protesters surrounding and intimidating Jewish students. And incredibly, just days after the horrific October the 7th terrorist attack when Hamas killed more than 1,000 innocent Israelis and took 200 more hostage, a collection of so-called Harvard Palestine Solidarity Groups issued a statement saying that it held the Israeli regime entirely responsible for all unfolding violence. Just an incredibly offensive and incorrect statement there, victim blaming, and it created waves right around America. Hedge fund billionaire and Harvard old boy Ken Griffin then created a storm by saying he wouldn't employ any student who'd signed that statement. But if you sign that letter, no, I'm, I'm not going to hire you. I don't have to. And the temperature was raised again when pro-Palestinian protesters even targeted a cancer hospital because Griffin had donated hundreds of millions of his own dollars to it. Another complicit institution, Memorial Sloan Kettering Centre. Yeah. Yeah. Make sure they hear you there in the Thankfully, Griffin seems to be a man of moral clarity and not the sort of man to take a backward step. The fact that people protested at Memorial Sloan Kettering, where humanity wages war against cancer, tells you just how sick these fanatics are. It just says it all. Add into this mix the abysmal performance by university presidents before a congressional hearing Back in December, we showed you some of this last year. The Harvard president was one who refused to call out anti-Semitism on campus. And Dr. Gay, at Harvard, does calling for the genocide of Jews violate Harvard's rules of bullying and harassment, yes or no? It can be, depending on the context. What's the context? Targeted as an individual, targeted as, at an individual. It's targeted at Jewish students, Jewish individuals. Do you understand your testimony is dehumanizing them? It wasn't long after that, that pathetic showing, there's no other word for it. Soon after that, Dr Gay resigned from Harvard. And Griffin was one of those scathing about his old university. There is no room in my world for anti-Semitism and for calls for genocide. There's just not. And it was heartbreaking to me to watch the testimony in front of Congress when asked a very simple question about how would you react to calls for genocide on campus. I mean, this is a simple answer. You can ask my lawyers, but I'm gonna tell you as the president of fill in the blank university, there is no tolerance for calls for genocide on my campus. Again, well said, but it gets better. Griffin has now slammed the universities for churning out whiny snowflakes instead of leaders. Are we going to educate the, the future members of the House and the Senate and the leaders of IBM? Or are we going to educate a group of, of young men and women who are just caught up in a rhetoric of oppressor and oppressy and this is not fair and frankly just like whiny snowflakes? Like where are we going with education in elite schools in America. And that's a really big issue. And now this bloke who's not been afraid to put his money where his mouth is, who's donated hundreds of millions of dollars to that cancer hospital, and get this, about $500 million to Harvard. Yep, over the years he's donated half a billion dollars to Harvard. 
Well, he's now going to let his money talk. Are you still supporting Harvard financially? No. <laughs> and, and I'd like that to change, and I've, I've made that clear to members of the, uh, the corporate board, but until Harvard makes it very clear that they're going to resume their role as educating young American men and women to be leaders, to be problem solvers, to take on difficult issues. I'm not interested in supporting the institution. What a great man, hey? That is a high price for Harvard to pay, but deservedly so. The university has shown moral weakness and intellectual cowardice, and Griffin is prepared to make them pay. Good on him. Standing up for Israel, standing up for moral clarity, and standing up for intellectual integrity.